we have gotten our hands on the texts. The admissions by Nathan Wade's friend and former lawyer that they did not want you to see. We're gonna to get to that in one second. This morning, we will dissect the mind-blowing hearing in Fulton County that took place Tuesday afternoon and bring you exclusive information about this case. As I told you yesterday, that hearing could blow up one of the four criminal cases against former President Donald Trump. At the heart of it all, a man named Terrence Bradley. He's the one-time law partner, divorce attorney, and friend of Special Prosecutor Nathan Wade. He did not want to be there yesterday, and he made that abundantly clear as he obfuscated and did a whole lot of not recalling things. You don't recall it? No, I don't recall. Um, I would say it was the one, but I, I don't recall. Yes, that's, that's speculation on my part, yes. I don't recall, but... Um, why I thought that it started at that time. I, I don't know why I didn't um, say I don't know. I, I don't recall. Um... I mentioned earlier that I speculated on some things. I mean, it was downright uncomfortable. I believe, and you'll hear me say this throughout the program, that he lied. I believe he lied repeatedly, that's my opinion, about his faulty memory. Now, if you're reading CNN today, they're gonna tell you, quote, a Georgia lawyer who had been billed as a star witness in the effort to disqualify Fulton County DA Fannie Willis did not deliver damaging testimony Tuesday on her romantic relationship with prosecutor Nathan Wade. Oh, CNN, dumb or dishonest, take your pick. The article goes on to say, quote, most notably, he said he did not know when the relationship began and whether it began after Willis hired Wade to spearhead the prosecution of Donald Trump and his allies. Bradley said he was speculating about the timeline, end quote. So sit back and listen as we do the hard work for them and more importantly for you. Because when you dig into what was actually said, what wasn't said, and take a look at the evidence that went into the court record yesterday, a lot more was revealed than you would have caught from CNN. Key to this story are the texts that Mr. Bradley and defense attorney Ashley Merchant exchanged over several months. Texts that prove Terrence Bradley told attorney Merchant counsel for the defendant, Michael Roman, this is a Trump co-defendant, that the DA, Fannie Willis, and the special prosecutor, Nathan Wade, had been having an affair and that it began prior to Ms. Willis hiring Nathan Wade to prosecute Trump, something both Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade denied under oath. Nathan Wade was paid hundreds of thousands of dollars by the taxpayers in Fulton County, Ms. Willis was the one doling out the checks as he whined and dined her and took her on lavish vacations around the world. But when Terrence Bradley, again, former attorney and friend Nathan Wade, took the stand under oath after having given it all up to Ashley Merchant by text, he seemingly forgot it all. The man might wanna check with a doctor because he's clearly having some early onset dementia. If even one of his answers yesterday was true. Suddenly he decided everything he had provided to Miss Merchant was just, what's the word? Um, speculation. When you told me that their relationship started when she left the DA's office and was a judge in South Fulton, where did you obtain that knowledge from? It was I was speculating. Um, I didn't have a um, no one told me I was speculating. No one told you that? No one told me that. Was this speculation when you told me that? Was that based on things that had been told to you and things that you had witnessed? I never witnessed anything. So, um, you know, it, it was speculation. I can't tell you um, 
anything specific. Is there anywhere in here that indicates that she didn't have knowledge of no. knowledge? These speaking objections are clearly coaching the witness. That when I ask a question, Mr. Bradley is looking at Mr. Wade and his lawyer to wait for them to object. And I've never looked at Mr. Wade or his attorneys. That sounds quite true. As you just heard, Nathan Wade was in that courtroom yesterday as his one-time friend and law partner was on the stand. Wade had tried to stop it from happening at all, but the judge ruled this testimony must go forward and that Terrence Bradley had to testify about the Wade-Willis romance and what Terrence Bradley knew about it. The judge listened to him in camera in his chambers on Monday and decided the, the claims that this was all protected by attorney-client privilege were nonsense. These guys were friends and law partners for years before he actually started to help Nathan Wade with the divorce. None of those conversations would be privileged. Not about this, and the judge ruled he had to talk about it. And this was the out he chose. Can't, can't remember. I want you to know these texts that he was being queried about. They happened last month. <laughs> this wasn't 10 years ago. He just had these exchanges, literally weeks ago. All right, I want you to keep all of what you just heard in mind. As our show brings you this next bit of information, courtesy of our first guest, Phil Holloway. He's an attorney down in Cobb County in this area. He knows a lot of these players, and he got his hands on some of the actual texts. So far, we've only heard the lawyers raise the substance in questions, show them to the witnesses, and then hear some answers. No one has shown us the actual text messages between Ashley Merchant and Terrence Bradley, but Phil Holloway got his hands on some of them and is sharing them with us exclusively. In one exchange about Fannie Willis and Nathan Wade's relationship, look at this. Ashley Merchant says, like, just date, don't hire him. Do you think it started before she hired him? Terrence Bradley writes back, absolutely. It started when she left the DA's office and was judge in South Fulton. FYI, folks, this is MK talking. She became a judge in South Fulton in 2019. Okay, back to the text. Ashley thumbs up that answer, and then Terrence Bradley adds, they met at the municipal court CLE conference. Ashley responds, that's what I figured when he was married. There's no doubt in his mind, I'm looking at it again. Do you think it started before she hired him? Absolutely. And then he adds, it started when she left the DA's office. By the way, that was 2018. And for a period of months, she went into private practice. Then she was elevated to judge in 2019. Then in 2020, she became the DA. She'd been in the DA's office as an underling for years. Okay, so when she left the DA's office was 18. When she was judge in South Fulton was 19. And he says, in response to, do you think it started before she hired him? Absolutely. It started when? He adds, he fills in. He he knows. He gives the specifics. When she left the DA's office and was judge in South Fulton. Oh, and by the way, let me tell you exactly where they met. It was at the Municipal Court CLE Conference. Then we go on. January 5th, days before Ms. Merchant filed her bombshell motion to disqualify both of these guys, Willis and Wade, from the case against the former president of the United States, Ashley Merchant texts Terrence Bradley. Look at this. For those of you listening, go to youtube.com slash Megyn Kelly. You can see it all. She texts Terrence Bradley. Is this accurate? She's getting ready to file the motion and she's clearly offering him a line from it. Is this accurate? Upon information and belief, Willis and Wade met while both were serving as magistrate judges and began a romantic relationship at that time. Terrence responds, no, municipal court. Municipal court. His correction was they were municipal court judges, not magistrate judges, which is a different thing entirely. He's correcting only the role they had while on the bench, not the rest of this, where she talks about Willis and Wade met um, and began a romantic relationship at that time. He does not correct that. Just the court that she said they were sitting on. And she did make his correction, and she got it right when she filed her motion. I'm not done. The two also texted about that legal filing she was about to drop. It was a bombshell filing. 
This is Ashley Merchant's first notice to us all that these two have been having an affair, there are alleged kickbacks, they need to be disqualified. This whole thing, which set off an absolute firestorm for the entire case from the beginning of January. They also texted about the filing and Terrence Bradley directed Ashley Merchant to add him into a footnote, footnote in her brief about the amount of money he made from the DA's office. You see, he worked for the DA's office under contract for a period of time doing what we understand was taint reviews, like where you, the DA's office gets a bunch of privileged documents on a case and the DA prosecuting the case can't review it. So you get like a taint squad to make sure what gets filed to the DA is, is viewable properly by her. Whatever, he was hired by the DA's office for a period of time by contract. And he's saying, add me back in. Uh, you should add me back into your footnote on that because I made some money from the DA's office. Ashley responds to him, I took you out. I can add that back. Good point. Terrence writes, yes, add it back. Ashley, anything else? Anything that isn't accurate? And Terrence Bradley responds, looks good. Ashley Merchant hearts that. She then asks him, how do you think they will respond? I'm trying to anticipate. And we know from the testimony we heard in court and, and Ashley Merchant cross-examining him, uh, he said, I think they will deny it. He said, I don't think they'll go after you. I think they will deny it. That's apparently on the next page of texts. Now, I want you to know, we looking at these texts, and I've got them in front of me, um, this was all happening at the same time. Like, we don't have a date on the third text, but the first two, January 5th, uh, at around 11.56 a.m., so right before noon. So what we have here is her saying, do you think it started before she hired him? Absolutely, here's exactly when it started. That's what I figured. Then she says right, right, right away, is this accurate? On information and belief, they met while both were serving as magistrate judges and began a romantic relationship at that time. He corrects her, municipal court. She says, thanks. Then he tells her, add me to that footnote. And she says, good point, I will. And then she says, as a follow-up, anything else, anything else that isn't accurate. And he says, looks good. He doesn't say, yeah, there's a lot. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, pick, your, pick your poison. He's already given up the farm in these first two texts. But he did not say anything is inaccurate other than which court they were sitting on when they met. He says, looks good. And she hearts it. And then she says, how do you think they'll respond? I'm trying to anticipate. And we know from the cross-examination that he responded to that text by saying, I think they will deny it. That's where we are. Now take a listen here as former President Donald Trump's lawyer, Sadow, because all the lawyers, Ashley Merchant got a, ch a chance to question Terrence Bradley, Sadow did, Gillum, all these different lawyers got a bite at the apple because there are you know, more than a dozen defendants in this case and they each get a chance to question, though the judge shut down, you know, repetitive questioning. Okay, so here's uh, Trump's lawyer, Sadow, questioning Bradley. After the word absolutely, you on your own said it started when she left the DA's office and was judge in South Fulton. They met at the municipal court CLE conference. That's what you said, correct? That is correct. So you on your own came up with the whole notion that it started when she left the DA's office and was judge in South Fulton. That's, according to you, that's speculation on your part, correct? Objection. Overruled. Answer. answer the question, Mr. Bradley. Yes, that's, that's speculation on my part, yes. Why would you speculate that that's when they started the relationship? What would cause you to put that down as speculation? I don't recall, but um, why I thought that it started at that time. Why would you speculate when she was asking you a direct question about when the relationship started? I have no answer for that. But if you didn't know and you were asked specifically as this exhibit shows, mm -hmm. maybe you can explain why you wouldn't say, I don't know. I, I don't know why I didn't um, say I don't know. You say after in South Fulton, 
they met at the municipal court CLE conference, right? You yes, see that? that is yes, that's correct. And then Miss Merchant says, that's what I figured when he was married. Is this accurate? Upon information and belief, Willis and Wade met while both were serving as magistrate judges and began a romantic relationship at that time. You see, that's what she said, right? Yes, that was in the test. You don't say, I don't know. You simply correct her by saying no, municipal court. So I was answering the question of, it was a compound question. Um, Can you and add I, was, I was answering the question of, she wrote magistrate court and I said no, municipal court. Okay. What's more, the court camera did not appear to pick up something very interesting, but the camera of Fox News did. In this clip we're about to play for you, it appears that Terrence Bradley mutters, oh, dang, to himself. That's how it sounds. I will tell you, it could have been someone else whose mic was hot. It appears to be him muttering, oh, dang, when Terrence Bradley is presented with potentially damning texts about the Willis Wade relationship. Watch. The first page starts off by saying, Miss Merchant, like just date, don't hire him. Do you think it started before she hired him? You see that? Yes, I see it. Yes. <laughs> He's being shown the text exchange that reads, Ashley, just like date, don't hire him. Do you think it started before she hired him? And Terrence writing back, absolutely. It started when she left the DA's office and was judge in South Fulton. Ashley thumbs up that one. And Terrence also adds, they met at the municipal court CLE conference. Ashley responds, that's what I figured when he was married. Okay, we went through it. Um, well, if it wasn't Terrence Bradley saying, dang, it was definitely somebody affiliated with the state because it was, certainly wasn't a defense lawyer saying, <laughs> shoot, that's bad. I suppose it could have been one saying, dang, we nailed it. This is one of those smoking gun moments that didn't happen, according to CNN. Now, it's also important to note that it appears someone in the Wade Willis sphere may have gotten to Terrence Bradley before he testified. What else explains the complete 180 between the texts and the on-stand testimony? Perhaps he was threatened if he spilled the beans on what he knows. There were suggestions that someone, that, that someone may be a man named Gabe Banks. Mr. Banks is reportedly a close friend of Nathan Wade's. Terrence Bradley admits that they spoke to one another and Banks previously told the judge in this case that he was concerned Terrence Bradley might be quote, emotional and violating attorney client privilege. So did Gabe Banks make a phone call to Terrence Bradley saying, Sure would be an unfortunate thing if you violate that privilege, Mr. Bradley. Who knows what could happen? We don't know, but we'll play you the soundbite in which this issue came up. By the way, Gabe Banks' wife is the chief of staff to Fannie Willis. You can't make it up. Discover a holistic wellness solution with Bond Charge, a brand dedicated to optimizing every aspect of your life. Grounded in science and inspired by nature, their evidence-based products cover a broad spectrum of premium wellness items. From enhancing sleep and performance to boosting energy, accelerating recovery, and balancing hormones, Bond Charge offers a diverse range of benefits. Consider the infrared sauna blanket from Bond Charge that they say can burn extra calories and detoxify. This innovative blanket elevates your heart rate simulating the effects of physical exercise. Bond Charge says sweating during the process will help eliminate heavy metals and toxins from your body. Setting it up takes less than a minute and it rapidly heats up for a quick and convenient experience. For a limited time, save 15% by visiting bondcharge.com MK and use the coupon code MK. That's bond, B-O-N, charge, C-H-A-R-G-E.com slash MK 
and use the coupon code MK to save 15%. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.